Good morning. Good morning. It is oh dark thirty, actually uh, five fifty-five. As I just checked the time on the phone, and it's just getting light out. I woke up a little earlier here because Miss Mittens. There's Midnight. Can't quite see him. Miss Mittens decided it was snuggle time and needed to get up. Well, laying there in bed, I don't know if you guys do this, but laying there in bed is just before you get up. That's when your creativity really kicks into high gear. Your manifestations are uh, created. It's just for the day to pass for them to come through. Got a lot going on today. I thought I'd carry you along for the ride because I got a different kind of perspective I want to share with you, and and uh, several good things to share with you. It's going to be a, a double, triple whammy day. This will be a um, maybe a little bit of a long video, but oh, turkeys are hearing me. We're going to have some fun, so hang on and. Uh, Maybe I can share with you a perspective just, you know, kind of blew me out of the water in a different way. Not that I didn't know it, but seeing it play out is uh, kind of awe-inspiring, yeah, awing, you know. All right, hang on, folks. All right, let's see here. I think I'm getting set up. It's going to be a fun day today. Uh, got a couple of couple of gifts to share with you. Uh, one, I have a real treat. I know you're gonna love. I'm putting together all the ingredients for our squash soup, and we're gonna do it in a big kind of way. And while I'm showing you this, uh, I thought I would share with you some insights that I've had based on what um, I'm being taught. You can toss some interesting things if you observe um, things around you and nature and how it works. Oh boy, you can learn some really power, powerful stuff. So, uh, first off, I'm in the process of getting set up. Like I got to get a few more items here. I got some of the ingredients, and oh, we're going to make a huge batch of this uh, uh, soup. Talk about nature. Mr. Tommy, I don't think she... She, she doesn't want to... Mm -mm. Nope, she got off. Alright, so hang on, we're almost there. Alright, I think we're just about there and ready to get going. Uh, for those of you who wish to uh, record uh, what we got here for your own creation, uh, let me give you a quick glance at this and you'll be able to... I'm not going to put it in the description. I'm going to put it right here. So you'll have to pause and, and kind of write it down. But there's your information. And that should do it. You should have it. That's for the, the basics. Um, so I'll just read through it real quick. Uh, one medium-sized Hokkaido squash. Uh, or Hokkaido squash. I'm not sure on the pronu pronunciation. Hokido, okay. Um, why don't you uh, go run and grab that one so we can show them um, the one that's over there, so we can show them. So it's, it calls for one one of these squash. Now, we'll grab one, whichever one you want. I don't care. Uh, we'll show them what the squash looks like. Now, the other day I showed you the um, uh, the those big blue hubbards. That's what we're going to use for this particular, but you can use butternut or acorn or any other one of those squash. Pumpkin, maybe. Uh, pumpkin's a bit of a strong flavor for this. Um, uh, that's why you see it used in pies, because in order for the flavor to be that um, it's palatable for a lot of people, you need, it kind of need to sweeten it up. Uh, the, the, the blue Hubbards, green hub Hubbards, are already in what is known as the sweet meat family of squash so pretty good pretty good stuff um, so two 
smallish yellow onions, which would be probably little ones like this. I happen to have a couple of large ones. Um, some butter, a quarter cup of butter, one teaspoon or, or more of uh, ground black pepper. Uh, one half teaspoon of uh, nutmeg, grated nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon of ground coriander, and chicken broth. Um, so we've got uh, some organic chicken broth. I got my pepper, uh, I got my nutmeg, some coriander, uh, butter, and all right, so this is a high keto. It kind of looks like they're called pumpkins, but they're not very big as they're you can red curry squash the, yeah red curry but the curry is only in reference to the color pretty mm -hmm. much come around here everybody can see you um so we also because t and i are both very big garlic lovers we we do the um do yeah, some garlic, garlic uh and salt and cream uh one cup of cream so the cream will stay in the refrigerator for the moment, but I have uh, visited my local um, dairy guy, and I got uh, the other day I got uh, some some fresh milk straight from the cow, or, or, or uh, unpasteurized, un just raw milk, some good stuff, and and we get it from a Jersey cow, and and um, boy, the amount of cream that comes on top of that is, is spectacular. So those are the um, the deals. Uh, while we go to making this. Um, uh, I want to share with you some understandings that every day become more and more clear to me and um, in this understanding I can see uh, the pendulum swing. The pendulum swing that um, you and I have talked about many times as far as what we're observing in the world, how the pendulum of certain ways have been pushed so far to one end and now we're, we're watching the pendulum we, I think over the last couple years it kind of pendulum came to a stop and now we're seeing it start to move back in the other direction and we're seeing to see that, starting to see that in a lot of different aspects so some really fun observations that I've made um, that I want to share with you so let's get started with this um, the first big bag that we did Oops, and it's got a hole in it. Oh, it's leaking. Let's go ahead and put that in there. This, that one blue Hubbard was very, how should I say, um, uh, watery uh, that you did. We did the other two uh, in the um, in the uh, giant crock, which is right behind you, uh, yesterday in preparation for today. So we're going to have some fun. Uh, we started to try and puree this, but... Uh, it was the the other two Hubbards were so thick and a little more dry, which is good. We we kind of want that, um, uh, so, so that uh, in order to blend it, I we, what we usually do is start adding the um, the chicken broth to to thin it down, and I do that in the blender. So the first thing I'm doing is oh, I'm gonna put all of this in there. You're gonna wring that out of there. Get, get every good little bit out. Right? Get every little good little bit out. All right, so we're going to turn this over here. It's early morning. It's uh, just a little after 8. Sun's coming up. We'll have to keep an eye on things. Maybe we'll tilt it. There we go. I want to see you guys too, you know. i got to keep an eye on you. <laughs> All right, so that one's out. Um, what do we got here? I'll put the rest of these in. Yeah, we're going to do it a bit at a time. Let's put some, first off... Now, on this, um, on the uh, chicken broth, we're doing a huge batch. So, you, you got to have um, some basic math and or very good gut feelings in proportions. Because if you can do that, sometimes it doesn't have to be exact, perfect to this. And, yeah, I'll get the big one because we're going to need that one. So, um, in preparation of getting the squash in here just to just to get it into the pot where it's in a consistency uh, that's why we puree it because we want a nice smooth consistency so I'm gonna take and let's see what I want to do I want to add a little bit of the chicken broth and it could be vegetable broth if you're a vegetarian, vegetarian vegan kind of thing let's dump off some of this this stuff is still kind of thick 
Yeah, very nice. I'll squeeze out a bit of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time. <laughs> bubble in there. There it is. All right. Poke it down in there. Yeah, poke it down in there. Still pretty thick. All right. Let me hit it. All right, so what I can do is add a little bit more. What I'm concerned with is consistency it's getting an air bubble so scoop out that just stir up that air bubble there you go here to go did you hear it burp yep oops there we go that a little bit Until it gets that air bubble in it every time. There we go. Stir it again. Still needs a little bit more. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. That air bubble out of there. There we go. See it sucked an air bubble down in there. We still need a little bit more. So let me show you here the consistency and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break on this. Go ahead and process this because you don't need to sit here and watch me do all that because it's going to take a few minutes to get that done. So watch the consistency here. Let's see. Oops. Hold on. I'm trying to get to where I, there we go. So it just burped. All right, so there you go. That's the kind of consistency you want. It actually needs to probably be just a tiny bit thinner, but what we're looking for is a very thick consistency uh, soup, but this isn't thick enough to keep it from burning or sticking to the pan, or thin enough, I should. So we're gonna have to work it out. So let me get this, let me get this all processed and we'll be right back and move on with uh, the recipe and some fun chatting, hold on. Okay, so we've gotten the majority of it processed, but I'm down to my last, let's see, I'm down to my last uh, uh, blender full of it, and this is where I want to do, this is my own technique, this is where I want to um, uh, uh, process uh, some of these ingredients in such a way that I get the, the, the consistency that I want. So, um, we got uh, the yellow onions that we need to add and because I don't want chunks I want basically a smooth creamy smooth creamy um, uh, consistency to, to be like almost a, almost like a pudding but not quite as thick hello guinea what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take certain ingredients I'm actually just gonna blend them in so let me get these sliced up here and what I'm going to do is I've got this at a consistency that I want in order for it to be thick enough to allow these ingredients to actually get chopped up in my blender. Guinea! I've got one guinea that seems lost. But yet the other two are right near it. Yeah, the other two are right there next to it. 
Well, I think what we've got are two males and a female, and I think the one male is going, um, I need to find a girl too. Ooh, that's possible. I, I didn't, I forgot to look up. Yeah, I think we got two section. males. All right, so in observation of nature, being, <laughs> let, the cook, talk. Let, the, let the cooking begin. In observation of nature, I have come to understand uh, the need for, uh, how do I put this, uh, for individualism and the strength that individual and individualism actually gives to the existence of, um, if, of everything, for that matter, of everything, and the survivability is based on our different levels of individualism. And I see this, now I got the onion in there. T's, T's already working on starting to warm it up over there. I've got to get this in here. So I've been in the bees. T and I have been in the bees here lately. And Oh, and by the way, hello, hello. <laughs> I see you. Uh, our number two hive, we went in last night and we found Miss, Miss Queenie. Miss Queenie has returned, which is great. We're still waiting on a queen to return to hive number four. And it is in watching the bee behavior that shows us, for me at least, is, is what, just one of the many, many, many examples that shows us just how perfect nature is in certain ways and its ex ex expressions to us of balance and imbalance. And why, you know, we have been pushed so far out of balance that nature... Is, is showing us this. Nature is showing us this in many ways. But what is it about the bees, huh? It doesn't make sense. Well, okay, Aaron, what's about the bees? Next, while I'm doing this, let's get some coriander. It says one quarter teaspoon. Now, here's the thing. When you cook the, um, the coriander, mm, when you cook the coriander, if you do it as whole, because this, uh, this calls for ground, and all I have is whole, because I saved my own seed. I have to grind it. So I'm going to do that in the blender. Uh, smells good. I know. Uh, so I'm going to let it blend up in. That's why I'm saving this last bit, batch. Now, so you understand, when T and I do it, and do it in bulk. We do it in big batches. We do it in big batches. And what do you have there? Uh, that is a six-gallon uh, pot. Uh, and we have it about half full, about half full. So we're doing, it's going to be about three, uh, or excuse me, six, uh, about three gallons. And so let's do a little bit of, you know, approximate approximation. This recipe is calling for a quarter teaspoon of ground coriander. I'm going to use the blender to grind it. So I'm throwing everything in this last batch of uh, puree. And or at least the stuff I want to chop up. So I'm going to put the onions and the coriander in there. And the coriander, this is for... Uh, it only makes like a couple of yeah, servings. It, yes, it says six servings, but those are kind of small. T and I basically figured, you know, when we get a good bowl of soup, generally what they call a serving is about... Get a bowl of soup. Yeah, if you want to eat a bowl of soup, there's about two servings based on this one Haikuta squash, because you can, you can see that's not not huge amount of um, squash. Because this is about a medium-sized squash, so let's 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 bump that up. So if I've got a quarter teaspoon for this much volume, I'm thinking I could put about about a dozen of these to make that. Volume. Probably at least twelve of these to make that volume, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, so what I'm going to do is instead of so that's a um, uh, quarter teaspoon. So you're looking at uh, a full teaspoon for uh, four times as much. And so I got about um, a minimum of 12 times as much. So I'm, I'm looking at at least a, a full three to four teaspoons yeah. of, of, of 
coriander and that's not ground so I'm gonna even bump it up a little bit more because I think we may even have a little bit more in there I got a lot in here I think that's good yeah, I think it, that ought to be good about close to and, five and pieces and if you cook like an Italian you just measure and you, and you throw you, it in you feel what the energy tells you and it you tells go with you We split the hives. You, you, you know we split the hives. And that was a few weeks ago because we got our new boxes built. And we split those hives. Where's the other onion? Right there. And we've been wanting to do that so that we could propagate the bees so that we'd have more than one colony. Uh, we've had lots of troubles in our country because of the chemicalization in the spring of the pesticides and herbicides and and all and we've got an issue with the uh, pollinators we're all aware of that so as part of my stewardship of this uh, earth that we live on and and trying to take care of things in my own little way uh, getting bees and trying to uh, help nurture nature back for some of the errors well, that's what I want to do is I want to propagate the uh, propagate the bees so been gong let it begin uh, so we um, we got the bees and they grew fast they grew so fast that they were uh, busting out of their tin frames and we knew we had to get ahead of them uh, because we wanted we didn't want them swarming. swarming and I didn't want to buy buy boxes that I could build myself you saw so you saw that you saw the the, the long hives get built we now have three of them that were built and uh, they're just growing into them. So, what is nature telling us in how how uh, it prefers to be balanced? Well, in the be in the bee behavior, the bee behavior, there is a natural uh, survivability instinct in them because we mentioned it here a second ago, swarming. Okay, so their survivability in, instinct is to to swarm. Uh, why? How? And how does this work? It's really interesting. Uh, see, you gotta understand. In the beehive, the queen is there to serve. The queen is there to serve all the worker girls, the ones that are getting the job done. All the queen is there mainly to do okay. is to for, help provide the production via the eggs same thing with the drones the drones are only there generally for one purpose and that's to mate with the queen so that she could provide the offspring all the other uh, workers are there to uh, to build the hive to bring the food back to build out the uh, uh, draw out the wax and, and basically to keep things running so Where's the imbalance, or where does nature want to keep that balance? How does that work within the hive? So here's the thing. If you've got a queen that isn't working properly, I want you to think on this one. You, this, you ponder this one, and it'll, it'll fry your noodle a little bit. But <laughs> if a queen isn't operating properly, the hive, the group of girls, the, the tribe, the community of bees, says mm, you're not doing us right and they will kill the queen but they only do that as soon as they make a new or start to make new queen cells so hive instinct is there is a certain size of community that's good for us that has a certain range and that's based on the environment the environment of the, the the bees that they have to basically the size of their house if their house is a certain size or their box or their their tree hole or whatever is a certain size that uh, uh, they only know they know they only have room for so they know for survivability that they can't live outside of their means they cannot they cannot grow beyond their ability to sustain themselves in their particular home. 
think on this one and how it relates to what we're dealing with around the world humanistically in our cities uh, in our governments and such think about it how it how it's just it's spectacular such a reflection that I see within nature as to why and how things are happening and the behaviors that I've seen within the bees as to how they're behaving due to their conditions it's spectacular it really is a, a fantastic uh, understanding once you once you once you see this picture so the girls will make their own queen they elect the person they want to serve them the queen has to perform properly or the girls will remove the queen she gets old she uh, uh, doesn't doesn't um, uh, produce as many eggs or she, she's not Whatever reason it is, if she's not doing what she's supposed to, guess what? Uh, they take her out. And they'll take her out quite brutally. And here's the thing. Here's a really neat thing. And I've watched this on, on uh, through the videos uh, from Dave over there on Barnier of Beast. Here's a really uh, crazy thing. They won't put up with more than one queen, generally if their size doesn't allow for it. Now there are rare instances where uh, because of the growing space that they're in that the girls will have more than one queen. We've seen um, some videos where they're, um, they, these, these guys go out and, and, and clean up these mega, mega, mega colonies and they'll go in and there'll be two or three queens because there's just so much comb they felt, feel that it's possible. So here we are on a planet, a mega, mega tribe. And we have uh, so many people that we have found that, okay, well, we can deal with a queen here and a queen there, but they're not serving us, so to speak, in the way that they should. They're, they're ruling over us, which has thrown us out of balance. They're, they're not doing their job as a queen, and yet all of us worker girls have not put them out. We have not said, all right, you're out of here. So the worker girls and the drones, drones drones don't do as much because they can't sting. They don't have the warrior sword, you know? They don't. They're mm -hmm. there for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to uh, mate, the mate the queen when the time comes. So, yeah, and then they die. And the queen goes on to reproduce. Let's make some more onions. <laughs> that down here. I really like a smooth consistency. When you get into this soup, when you get in, oh yeah, it's already. We need smell vision. Yeah, we need smell vision. Hey, where's Wonka where we need him? Willy Wonka. Uh-huh. Here, hold that. We need See? the smell vision. That's a uh, lid. Put that on there. I'm still not getting it down there. So that's, that is several aspects of the um, nature of these girls, okay? That's not it. I want to make sure this is thoroughly blended. I want, I want it chopped up. All the coriander chopped up. And that's just about it, I think. Now, I think we can... Oh, oh, you can... That's mm, why I said we need smell we vision. We need smell vision. All right. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, the other aspect of it is this. When things are naturally in cycle with those girls... Uh, they, they are going to grow and produce, okay? But when they sense, when they sense, and it's not the queen that makes the decision, it's the queen that follows the decision of the workers. workers. 
So when that hive gets big and the workers are going, hey, we're, we, ain't got, we ain't got no more elbow room here. We need to get going. They want to swarm. And the worker girls start to create the queen cups and the swarm cups. And when that happens, uh, the, the, the queen senses, uh-oh, something's going on here. When she knows that there isn't enough room and it's time to swarm, it's the, the old queen that is going to leave and attempt to create a new colony. And, and, ha and half the colony will leave, leaving some queen cups. And it usually happens almost immediately uh, when or after uh, the queen larva cap, or the, 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 the girls cap the, the, queen's, the queen cells. Yeah. So it's, it, it's an instant. So as beekeepers, as you know, human beings, we, we want to maintain... Um, the, the, the girls for honey production, those who do that will intentionally go in there and check the hives and then take out the queen's cells to keep the girls from wanting to leave so that they can bring up the honey production. How is this relating to what we've seen in our commercialism, in our governments? They have come into the swarms the groups of people and said okay you're not allowed to divide yourself anymore on at least on a physical level or a spiritual level you're not you know they, they want to keep us divided so that we can't be in our like the, the like the workers can't be in control of what's going on the you got these rogue people that have gone out to to try to uh, control it so that they could get the the bigger and better production out of us as a whole so each one of us could be working to produce and produce more so that they can extrapolate that production from us just like a beekeeper does with the honey kind of interesting huh I thought so what's our next ingredient here um, we need we done the, we did the onions um you did the onion and coriander the chicken broth we need the garlic salt nutmeg all right uh, yeah so i need a spoon let's just get a regular spoon i'm not gonna dig out the what does it say teaspoon teaspoon okay let's do this all right so ooh, come on off there there we go garlic uh, from production we didn't get good garlic this year remember I told you all we would do our own cloves throw them in the blender as you just saw and just blend them in unfortunately the, the garlic did not like the acidity of the soil we have to uh, adjust that so what are we looking at um, I was looking at 12 times recipe minimum right. so you, you put in about four tablespoons of coriander. Alright, so this this is call, yeah. This is calling well we've already got the coriander right. addressed. Oh, so we're looking at thinking, garlic. So half teaspoon. a teaspoon times twelve, that's six teaspoons of garlic. Which would be a tablespoon. Yeah, well, well I'm just gonna do six here. One okay. two stir, and then we'll stir. Taste, stir. Three, taste it and decide. Four five So we're in a conundrum here. We all are recognizing how out of balance things are. And unfortunately, not all of us see the, the, the natural balances that were because none of us have really lived in those natural balances. We haven't. We have been living, uh, there we go. We've been living in imbalance for such a long time because these parasitical um, rogue elements of our society, and there is a lot of that out there, have uh, been been at work for a long time. That's why this this cycle that we're in it's one of the biggest ones ever, ever, ever uh, in our recent history, as best we know. So, next ingredient, what do we got? Okay, so that was garlic. One teaspoon of salt. So we need some salt. I've got some. 
Himalayan salt. Some Himalayan salt here, and it says one teaspoon. And so we're doing 12 times. Let's go with 12 teaspoons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. T's got the heat on this. We know we're going to need to thin this down. We got some more, um, uh, some more chicken broth that is thawing. We used up the the three containers that we had, and it's still quite thick. Uh, so we're going to add some more of that. All right, what we got here? Um, butter is the next one. Let's see, chicken broth enough to cover or to to cons consistency that we want. So. Where's the butter? All right, one quarter cup unsalted butter, or you can use salted. We have some sweet salted butter that we have. Um, so, there's two cups there. That's one third. All right, there's no one third. This is the whole thing is a half a cup. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is um, we need butter. One quarter cup for this, so we need. Again, that would be see if second. It'd be uh, uh, one quarter cup would be times twelve, so it'd be three cups. You need to go get two more. Three it. cups? No, because this is a okay. Oh yes, we do need two more. Very good math. Very good math. She's thinking on her feet. <laughs> I was see. No, you're you said, right. Well, yeah, I know I'm right. Mark that on the calendar, folks. Because <laughs> I was going by this, I was thinking, okay, one, we one need. Cup. Yep. So I need to go get another cup of it. Yep. We need another two sticks. So let's dunk that in there. Maybe this will smooth. This is going to help smoothen it out and give it some consistency that we want. Big old stick of butter. Plop, plop. Now, again, this this is why we, T and I do this. Is You know, huge batches like this. One time of cooking uh, covers um, or one one batch co co covers what it's okay so 12 times this says six servings I don't agree with that I'm gonna say three but let's let's say uh, 12 times three that's 36 th servings that we're gonna have here 36 bowls of soup all done in this couple hours of time that we're gonna be working on this so there and there Okay, fun, fun, fun. You'll have to go get two more. I'll go get two more here in just a second. Why don't we pause for a second while I'm doing that, and then we'll come back at you. All right, back with you. Quick clean up on a few things, and uh, we're not done with the ingredients. So let's take a look at the next one. Uh, what'd you say? The pepper. Pepper. Okay, we did the salt. We did the garlic. Um, Pepper and nutmeg are the only two besides the Pepper sprinkles. and nutmeg. So where is our pepper on here? Oh, well, here it is. Two and a half teaspoons. Ooh, that means it's going to be peppery. I have a lot of pepper. Let me take the lid off of this. And so I got the fine ground pepper. Like I said, I want everything to have a, you know, very smooth consistency. So no large items, chunks or anything in there. And what do we got? Um, so two and a half teaspoons, uh, so, ooh, that's going to be a bunch. Well, if you just, if two you or keep more to going, taste. yeah, if, this is what we did just to have that taste. So let's go, well, we're, we're talking times 12, so, um, that's, like, that's a lot of pepper. That's like 20. That's a bunch of, a bunch yeah. of. So, I don't know if we want to go that. We don't want to go that much. That much for this because you'd be surprised how much the flavor just con carries yeah. through it. So let's do one. Do half that, or even half and half. Two. Uh, so mathematically, that would say, let's see, five, uh, six times. So five. That'd be fifteen. That'd be fifteen. 
Um, three. Did I count that right? Yeah. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. All right. Let's get that mixed in and see how that how that goes flavor wise. Uh, and then we have to have the the ground nutmeg. Now, what is that called for? Uh, nutmeg. Half teaspoon times 12 is 6 teaspoons, so we're going to do 6 teaspoons here, alright, that's this one, open that, got 4 of them here, so I got one more concept on you, for you, on this notion as to why, I think that's what we're going to title this video, why this thing, all thing has to come to an end, there we go, because uh, we gotten, the hive's gotten too big, you know, the hive has gotten too big. So what I say, six? Yeah. Well, one, two, that's about two and a half, three. Three and a half. Come on. Four. Five. Let's just go with that. Because that may be a little strong. Well, like any good cook, you test it out. Yeah, we'll test it. We'll test it. We'll test it. Um, let's see. The only thing we're missing now is the cream, but that is after yeah. it cooks down. Let's, uh, we don't want to put the cream in it. We don't want to put Not the yet. cream in it until here. Let's take and put yeah. this in there because this, I think, this is starting to leak because the oh, yeah. package got froze. We don't want to put the cream in it till towards the end because that'll make it more easy to burn on the bottom and because we have such a big batch, because we have such a big batch, uh, that will make it a whole lot easier to burn because we can't get to the bottom there. I did want to add some more. There, we're starting to get to that consistency that I want to see. All right, I'm going to stick this back in the freezer because I don't want to use it all. So yes, our hives are getting too big. Alrighty. Hey Mittens, you wanna say hi? Come here. Come here. Y'all, say hi to Mittens. <laughs> yeah, you woke me up early cause you was hungry. Oh, and I don't think we've mentioned it in, in any of our videos, but um, no, we didn't. We haven't. We haven't mentioned it, but uh, you know, on a sad note, in our little unit here, our little thing, we lost uh, Peppy uh, a week or so ago. July twenty-first. You remember the day? I do. You remember the day? Um, we lost Peppy, and we were. It was. It was during a hot spell that we had here, and we thought she was just uh, dealing with the heat, like all of us, because. For about three or four days, it was we upper up. 90s, high humidity, and we were all just, you know, just collapsing from the heat. And uh, a couple days went by, and she was just getting more and more lethargic. So uh, one evening, I come out, and she, she's just laying there on the ground out here. And I, I said, uh, "Pippi, are you okay?" And she did, she didn't respond. She just she was just sitting there. I knew something. Finally, knew something was wrong. And so we brought her in for the night, and then she. Um, she stayed in, we let her sleep on the end of the bed where they normally sleep anyway, and um, in the middle of the night, she just howled, Row! I mean, just screaming in pain as she peed on the bed, which is obviously not normal, and it was so, so dark yellow, I mean, completely dark yellow. And uh, that morning, uh, about six o'clock or so, she got up, she looked like she had a little bit more energy, uh, we tried to get her to eat and drink, and she wouldn't do it. And very shortly um, uh, after we got up, she peed again, screaming and hollering uh, when she did uh, about how it hurt. And it was really, really, really dark yellow. And uh, so we tried to get her to drink some water, but uh, wouldn't, she wouldn't do it. Well... In our normal course of uh, doing things in and out, taking care of the birds and stuff, uh, she slipped right out the door 
and crawled under the deck here way up uh, up here to where you, you can't get to her and she just lay down and uh so, okay well, she's just going there to cool off so we're like um we'll check it we'll check in her in a little bit well t needed to run to town to take care of something and shortly after t left i went to check to her and she wouldn't respond uh so i pulled her out with a literally with a garden rake because she just i poke her and anyway well she went into um what is it called when the uh di i want to say di like a diabetic shock or something like that but essentially we think her, her kidneys just failed on her and unfortunately i had to hold her through her last hour she wasn't going to make it and then she passed anyway to let you know pippi is uh has gone on and we have um uh, left her to lay in our hugel mounds uh, so that she, her energy can go back into the creation of the things around us so um, yeah uh, we're, we're down one but um, you know it is what it is so uh, we got everything but the cream we're just about there um, it's it's near the th consistency that I like to see however it is not what I would say cooked cooked yet it's going to take quite a bit so we're probably going to hang on take a break on that and then add the milk or add the cream because it is I got almost a little quart of cream to do that so uh so the understand yeah what I was just gonna say back to your comments of how our world has become like a beehive it's become too overpopulated way too overpopulated and uh, when when the workers sense that that um, they're running out of room well guess what they relocate and if you liken that to th this sense that we are getting as, as people we're all looking to find a safer place we're all, all looking to relocate and we're trying to figure out how and and um, how to be more sufficient within the environment or more efficient in the environment around us because that's what the girls do you know they're, they look for a new home where they can where they can support themselves, where it's got plenty of flowers, plenty of plant growth, and they, they move into areas that that are um, essentially better for them. They split and they and they spread themselves out. Well, we're we're in the end of a cycle where, um, for hundreds and hundreds of years, we've had this migration, and it's 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 gotten to the point where nobody can migrate either willingly or forcefully into a area where they can they can be sustained very easily and i and i i say that uh, from a broader sense you see the forced migration that's been done in europe uh, from one culture to another you see forced migration that's being done here in america um, by people who would take uh, two different kinds of bees you got your American bees and you got your South American bees that are, from all that intensive purposes of thoughts and understanding, um, <laughs> your Africanized <laughs> South American bees, uh, and 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 they're not sustainable, and they haven't been um, uh, allowed to be sustainable for even longer period than the American bee population if you know what you understand what I'm saying because we started out that way that's what this country was about and now the the migratory nature forced or willing I'm not going to get into that we we know that but you're just seeing the picture for where we are in this cycle is we're getting to the point where we can't migrate anywhere there's no hardly anywhere for us to go and uh, you know with with T and I when our migration to where we're at on this homestead it was a um, desperate attempt for all intents and purposes to find the most distance between me and others so that 
uh, when when we have a hive collapse, and this hive, this massive hive around the plant is going to collapse, nature intends it that way. And this is the hard thing for me, and, and many of you probably will, will get this, um, the hard thing for me, and a lot of you is, oh, we don't want to see a hive collapse because it is destructive. It's not a positive thing. There's, it's not growth. It's a retraction. So, um, we're almost there. It's I mean, looking good. It's looking good. I mean, good. for example, in China, they are forcing those folks that are away from the cities that are actually growing their food into, into the, the cities, cities to try and cr to expand their consumption and uh, instead uh, of allowing people to do what we're doing to grow what they need yep. to for their own survivability of their own culture but the Chinese government says no everybody has to be inside of a city limit for the government to take mm. care of them so I mean that that's total opposite of what yeah. The bees do. Yeah. Where they feel, oh, they're They need to go back they, out. They, they need to move out. Disperse themselves. Their first. city gets too big. They break it down into little counties again or to smaller groups. They move out into smaller, smaller right. hives until they can, so they can have a little room to grow. And that's their, that's their entire. That's, that's the way nature is supposed to work. Well, for this particular. Um, example, yes. Example, yes. And, and it works like that with all other living life forms as to what is the balanced entity and for humans that balanced ent entity has been uh, two phases. It, it's been a partnership between immediate individuals that are um, of love to, for each other on a very high level and then to um, what is known as a, a tribe or a clan or a, uh, that group, even oh, Cliff High talks about it, that 144, there's a magic number there, that 144 uh, dozen dozen uh, people that would, uh, that would uh, live and work together. That is a, what is considered a healthy community, a small community like this. Our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, especially Jefferson, because he worked on, on the um, uh, on the public land survey. As you you know, I'm a sur sur was a surveyor, and and studying this, it was all based the the, the entire construction and design of, of of the public land survey of everything past west of the uh, thirteen original thirteen colonies was all based on that. How do we divide this up? So that we have this, um, uh, uh, the the w w what is it? The, I'm, I'm looking for a certain word here. That uh, that natural symmetry, that natural balance of uh, space, room between people, the amount of room, amount of land it took somebody to uh, survive on their own or to live in a in a in a in a family, and then just enough of those to have a community, to have a city or a town. Uh, Sacred, ge yeah, sacred geometry, that's the word I'm looking for. I was for. thinking of the Fibonacci sacred. It, it, which is second, uh, sacred geometry. The sacred geometry that nature provides. The bees know it, the plants know it, the flowers know it, and for whatever reason, we've forgotten it. So, anyway, I think we're getting near the end of this. Let me show you the consistency of this carefully. And, let's see scoop it up and you see how it's kind of thick and, and pour it off the spoon it's a little splashy when you do it and I think we're getting close to the seasoning because it man it just smells fantastic so uh, we still have we still have to add we still have to add the um, the cream uh, but we don't want to do that until until we we, we get this hot hot because we want it all cooked now mind you I'm not going to process this for canning uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bag gonna we're going to bag it up in quart baggies and then freeze it because one bag feeds two of us yeah that's that's, two that's the way it works we get a quart baggie we can thaw it we put in warm water it thaws dumps out into a pot real quick real easy for us to deal 
with I know there's that issue with the single use plastics. I understand, but this just happens oh, to work. If it doesn't have a hole, we'll wash it out and reuse it. Which, she, yes, we do. Sometimes we reuse the, the, the plastics. Um, the, here, here's the other aspect of it um, when it comes to the nutrition. So it's remember, seeing everything, the big picture of all of these things that we learn and reapply. The reason I don't want to uh, overcook this is because in order to bottle it or can the, the, the soup, I would cook it, have to cook it at a much higher, higher temperature than I am. Thus, what happens is you degrade the nutrition in it. So every little step that we do, believe it or not, is thought out for a reason. Um, so uh, we, we have that left to do. Uh, it'll get bagged up. I, I think um, we're pretty much there. We've got all the ingredients in. I hope you uh, enjoyed our little process and our conversation. And I'm going to leave you with one thing. Whenever we have um, uh, a move or a step to um, uh, a step to uh, our self, our our our, our self-supporting individualism, uh, I like to support it. And you, so many of you have supported uh, T and I on this journey, and. I want to continue returning that support whenever possible. So uh, one of our subscribers, her, her name is um, Sunny, Preps. Sunny Preps. She has been a supporter of me on, on this channel for a long time because she has been in her awakening stand, uh, has decided to start pr producing her own videos uh, so that she can one, share what she's learning on her journey, her mistakes and her successes, and to also to reach out to you and me for additional communication on refining her understanding of recipes, the recipes of life, the recipes of, gro of, of um, growing. growing and food and all of that. So I'm going to encourage you all to go. I'm going to leave a link in the description. I'm going to encourage you all to go uh, watch her little intro video. And if you feel um, she deserves some attention, give her a subscribing and a thumbs up and and uh, let her know, um, you know, let her know that I sent you over there to um, uh, support our community because she is part of my community. And on that note, um, what do you say? We think we think we're pretty much there. I think so. I think we're pretty much there. We got to we got to finish eating this. It's going to take a while, so I don't want to hold you too much longer. It's going to take a while, and then um, we'll get it bagged up and frozen, and then we're good for a long time on this soup. And uh, we'll do another one. We'll do another one here soon. Where is my mouse? All right, folks. You have a blessed day, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.